Hey, and welcome to this video. Today, I'm going to be exploring Blender and discovering the tools I use the most in Autodesk Maya. I think the great thing about modeling or a lot of disciplines within the industry is that once you have a solid understanding of a skill, it's just a matter of learning the new tools. And with anything, I believe the best way to learn is to just get stuck in. The main tools I use day to day in Maya have to be the multi-cut tool, extrude, bevel, and circularize tools. If I can learn these, then I should be on track. So these tools are gonna to be my main focus in today's video. The format of this video will be as follows. I'm going to model a step in Maya, and then I will learn and show you the equivalent way to do that step inside of Blender. If I'm doing anything wrong, please let me know in the video's description so I don't learn bad habits from the get-go. In this video, I'm going to be modeling a Lego brick. And by Lego brick, I mean like a super simplistic version. So mainly a cube with some circular extrusions on the top. I'm not really gonna be covering the navigation, etc., inside of Blender. And this video will definitely mainly focus on the tools at hand. To go ahead and start, I'm going to use Maya. Just go in to draw out a cube like so. Just trying to mimic the rough shape of a Lego brick. So I guess the next logical step would be to bevel these edges. So once we subdivide, the main shape of the cube is held. So let's do that. Pressing Control B on the keyboard, we can just add a bevel. Just going to reduce the fraction and set the divisions to two. So now when we subdivide, the cube holds and doesn't collapse. Now let's go ahead and do this step inside of Blender. Just bear in mind, I'm still getting used to the navigation in Blender. Well, and also everything else. So let's go ahead and add the cube. Pressing Shift A, we can just then select the cube. And let's just scale it a little. Press S and then X for the X axis. Scale it a little bit like that. And I'll just move it up a little. So I'm just gonna press the G key and then Z. Just note that the X, Y, and Z axes in Blender are a little different from Maya. Okay, and to bevel, just click this little spanner and then the drop down for add modifier and just select bevel. We can then just set the segments to two. Okay, so this threw me off a little. See how we get stretching on our edges? And this is because we scaled the cube. So if we press Control A, and just let apply all transforms, it's going to resolve this for us. I guess it's a little bit like deleting history in Maya. So cool, we're up to speed with beveling. Just go ahead and apply this to our model. And let's head back over to Maya. Next, we're gonna go ahead and start using the multi-cut tool. So use shift, right mouse button, and just select the multi-cut tool. And then we're just gonna add some divisions like so using the middle mouse button to just center them wherever we click. Next, let's just go ahead and select these top faces using shift to do so. And then we're just gonna to want to extrude. So use control E and all we want to do is just have a little offset. And then just uh, switch off keep faces together. This way we get all the topology we need for the little connect parts. So I guess this step uses two tools. So let's go ahead and attempt this in Blender now. To use the loop cut tool in Blender, we need to be in the modeling workspace. So just click this little tab up here. Also just make sure you're in edit mode. Selecting the loop cut tool over here or by pressing control R on the keyboard, we can just click to add them in as we did in Maya. So once we've done that, we then want to go into face mode which we can do so by pressing free on the keyboard and then just hold shift, select all the faces on top. Hold down on the extrude tool over here and just change it to extrude individual. Just go ahead and move it a little, don't release and just click the right mouse button to cancel the movement. The extrusion has still gone ahead and happened but we can now scale these faces and offset them. You are just going to want to change this little mode here to individual origins and press S for scale. We can just move them in like so. Cool, so hopping back into Maya. Let's just go ahead and add some more divisions so we can work with the circularized tool. 
you're just going to want to add some edges like so, form one across through each of these squares. And once we've done that, we can just go ahead and select these faces. You can use tab to paint the selection, which can be handy. And once you've done that, we can use shift right mouse button and just go down to circularize, which does exactly what we want. Decrease the radial offset a little, control E, and we can just extrude up then and then control E so we can create a nice offset on the top. Finally, selecting all these edges across the entire top. We can just go ahead and then press control B to bevel two segments and then we can just adjust the fraction a little. So now when we subdivide by pressing free for smooth preview, we have a pretty clean mesh and everything looks as it should. Let's go ahead and just finish off our Lego brick inside a blender. Again, using the loop cut tool, let's add our cross cuts in like so. In the model editing mode, press free to go back into face mode. Select all these faces we want to circularize. So just press and shift to grow the selection. Once we've gone ahead and done that, to circularize in Blender, we actually need to activate an add-on called Loop Tools. To do so, go into Edit, Preferences, and then just click on Add-ons. Search for Loop Tools, and then just toggle it on. Now to use it, we can just come over here and click on this little arrow, which will open up this menu. Go to the Edit tab, and you will see Loop Tools. And then all you're literally going to want to do is just click circle. Pretty simple stuff. Changing back to individual origins as we did before, we can now scale this a little better with the S key. Coming back over to the extrude tool, but this time using the extrude region tool, just move them up like so. And now to create the offset, extrude again, but don't release this time. Just click with the right mouse button to extrude without moving the faces. We can then just scale offset as we did in Maya. Next, to go ahead and select these edge loops, in Blender, we need to go into edge mode, so press two, and then you're going to want to hold alt to select the entire loop. Using shift and alt, add all these edges to our selection. And then once you've done that, we can finally bevel. So use control B on the keyboard, and then we can just move our mouse until we have the bevel how we want it. And then finally to finish up, to add the subdivision modifier, click the spanner, add modifier drop down, subdivision surface, just up the divisions we can see in the viewport. And if you right click with the object selected, we can just turn on shaded smooth and you should now have the same looking mesh just as we did inside of Maya, and done. I hope this shines some light on some of the basic modeling tools in Blender. I've sure had fun playing around and learning its tools, and I suspect I'll make videos on the software in the coming year. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments or on my Discord server, and definitely let me know if you have any better methods or Blender tips for me. To finish up, this is going to be my last tutorial of 2020, so I wish you all a happy new year. Roll on 2021. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Wow.